mess junk. Usually when I revisit something for the channel, it's for a game I've already done a video on, but Fizanadu is an exception. I've only talked about this one here and there over the years, and I did crank through this game way back when. But after stumbling upon it again recently, I realized this is one of those games that should really be considered one of the most fun playthroughs on the NES. It's a straightforward, linear action RPG that looks a lot like Zelda 2, and while it still offers a good amount of challenge, it's still a more streamlined and more player-friendly game that I think deserves a lot more love. It was released in 1987 and made by Hudson Soft, who you'll recognize from games like Adventure Island and Bomberman. The story is taken mostly from the manual. You play as an elf returning home from a journey, only to find his hometown deserted of people and taken over by monsters led by the Evil One. No, really, that's his name, although maybe it's a more proper name pronounced differently, like Evil One? But that kind of makes him sound like the starting center for the Orlando magic. Anyway, a meteorite fell from the sky into something called the World Tree. It woke up the evil one and caused a bunch of dwarves from underground to come up and attack the elf town. In the game, you're actually traveling up a giant tree, as shown by the manual. Despite this game looking like Zelda 2, Fizanadu is very linear. The main structure at work here is strictly going from town to town, visiting shops and buying stuff, going to the next tower, defeating enemies, and finding the item you need to progress to the next area. Once you leave a section of the overworld, you can't go back. You might get the impression that some exploring is necessary, like if you get to a locked door, you'll need a certain kind of key, whether it's a jack, queen, king, or ace key to get through, but you can just go buy those keys in town. For the display, you've got life and magic meters, E is experience, which allows you to increase your strength and defense and boost your rank throughout the game, G is gold, or golds as the game insists on calling it, and T is the timer used for certain items you pick up, like the glove, which will increase your power, and ointment that gives you invincibility. It's all very simple, but well done for the most part, especially for the time, and it speaks to the quality of the game design here that this one is so easy to go back to today. But just because the game is easy to play and get into doesn't make it an easy playthrough. Fizanadu can be a really tough game, but you can at least equip a melee weapon, a shield, projectile magic, and items like potions and magic rings to help you out. Still, this game can and will kick your ass, whether it's these flying guys that zip across the screen, or these crazy looking bird things, ugh. This game loves to shove you into small areas where it's really tough to avoid damage. Fizanadu is one of those games where it's really important to grab the best possible gear you can, as soon as you can, and if that means grinding for gold, then so be it, but if you don't grind, this game can get tough. Part of that is because the controls can get a little weird. Your movement from left to right is momentum based and that can cause some problems when trying to jump across platforms. You have to back up as far as you can so you can build up some speed to make a longer jump. It can get pretty annoying to get used to, like sometimes the ceiling gets in the way or you don't have enough room to speed up, but it definitely doesn't break the game or anything. I gotta mention the amount of backtracking here as well. It's one of those games where you usually have to wander your way out of an area after completing it, but there are items like wing boots that can really help you out and cut down on time, so that's nice. There is some typical cryptic NES stuff here too. Like in the second tower, you obtain the aforementioned wing boots, which allow you to fly up into the air for a certain amount of time, but uh, where do I do that? You gotta go all the way to the right, jump in the right spot, and hope that you can keep floating upward to meet up with Edgar Winter up here. Again, kind of annoying where you're not sure what to do or where to go, but it's not a deal breaker. What could potentially break the game for you is the password system. Hmm, don't have negative thoughts, remember your mantra. Huh, I think I remember a certain hungry Garaya saying something like that. Well, in this case, my mantra is... I'm not gonna lie, it's a toss-up, I'll remember that next time I'm meditating. If you die, you keep your items, magic spells, and equipment, but it does not keep track of your exact experience and gold. It'll keep your rank that you've leveled up to to that point, but you'll get a fixed amount of experience points instead of what you left off with, but that's good enough, I suppose. But yeah, if you're playing the original NES version, the password system is the definition of a nightmare. It can be up to 32 characters long, H's look like N's, O's and zeros look the same, the lowercase g is a 9. So yeah, if you play the original on NES, you're better off just finishing the game in one sitting, which would only take you about three hours or so, or you can just always, you know, play this game any way you can. The thing about Fizanadu is that this game has a ton of charm, and I know that word gets thrown around a lot by reviewers, but I can show you what I mean. You got this dude smoking out here by himself, contemplating the end of the world as his town is attacked. You got Barney Gumble slumped over at a table. You got a goat wearing sunglasses riding an invisible bicycle. 
You've got great looking portraits of NPCs like the hairy armed weapons shop guy who looks like Rick Majerus, or the Sandman from ECW who sells you keys, or this tweaked out cleric that might have snorted too much holy water. You also come across some interesting areas like this fog overworld where these dwarves do a ton of damage. Man, I hate those guys. There's also plenty of NES charm here, and by that I mean there's a lot of ways to cheese the game, like buying a ton of red potions early on, only to sell them for like twice their worth in another town, or just exiting and re-entering rooms to trigger certain items and events. You know, it's just that kind of stuff. And now we've reached the part of the video where we listen to the music for a little while because it's really good. It was composed by Jun Shikuma, who did basically all the Bomberman music from the 90s, as well as games like Adventure Island and Wonder Boy 3. So yeah, Fizanadu is a great example of an early action RPG that's accessible and player-friendly, and despite the difficulty, backtracking, and some of the usual NES cryptic crap, it's still a fun playthrough that'll make an afternoon fly by. It's a shame this game only got one additional release on the Wii Virtual Console way back when, because it absolutely deserves a place on the Nintendo Switch Online service. I think it's easily a top 20 NES game, maybe even better than that, and it's right up there with Zelda 2, Crystallis, Star Tropics, Castlevania 2, and other games of its ilk. It is well worth checking out any way you can. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.